Okay. Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Uh, we're going to be doing Introduction to Dispensations Part 3, and I have my wife Janet here, smiling and everything. Say hi, Janet, and then pray us in. Hi, Janet, and pray us in. Haha. Uh Haha. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, let us pray. Um, Father God, thank you so much, O oh Lord, once again for this opportunity, good dear God. Thank you so much for uh, your word that giving us understanding more of you. Lord, knowing you is uh, the best things that we were, uh, you know, uh, need to do in our lives, so dear God, so that uh, we can know you better through your word. Lord, thank you so much. And to the people who are uh, uh, come in or listening, dear God, through Facebook and uh, wherever the, this video uh, posting in, Lord, thank you so much. And let them uh, encourage themselves to, to study with us, dear God to know uh, what you want them to know about you. Thank you so much in all this, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you very much. Okay, so before I share my PowerPoint, I wanna talk about what we're actually doing. What we were doing, I really don't know, I don't have idea. You said earlier that you have something, but I okay. didn't know. All right, so as you know, in the, in the, in the, uh, we've done two videos so far on introducing dispensations, right? Yeah. And the way I did it was in the last video, I went and I started making a PowerPoint to go into more detail about some of the things that the first video talked about, right? Mm hmm Well, and we asked questions and reviewed and built and went deeper. We drilled down, in other words. And so we're going to do the same thing again. Uh, based on interactions I've had with people's feedback on the videos and stuff like that, uh, certain areas that I feel led to go into, that's what we're going to do with the PowerPoint, okay? And also yes. because of time constraints, you know, I was doing my advanced Greek uh, homework and stuff, so, um, but I got what I think we need to cover today down. So here we are. I'm going to start the slideshow from the beginning. Okay. My words should be showing up at the bottom. All right, here we go. So, Introduction to Dispensations, Part 3. Okay, we're going to review, but we're going to be going deeper each time. All right, Janet? I, I can't see your face, but I know it's there. Am I sharing my screen? Yeah, sure, please. Why don't you I'm, tell me I'm sharing my, my screen? Go trying to <laughs> all right i needed you to see if i was sharing my screen you didn't tell yes me. you did yes okay now i am all right so here we go we're going to review and go deeper all right so here's our first question what is the socratic method and is it biblical janet My you goodness, answer that question socratic? Have you ever heard of Socrates? Socrates? Yeah, I heard, but I really don't know. He's a Greek philosopher, taught Plato, okay? And he basically taught through uh, making a statement and then testing people through questions and answers. So it's like answer, asking questions and question answers. And the question is, is it biblical? Well, Jesus done a lot of this, you know. Um, and so there it is, answering questions, asking questions and questioning answers. That's what we typically are doing in these videos, because if you say you believe something, I want to know why, right? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. we want, our goal is to be biblical, right? In our mm. thoughts and our understanding. Mm. All right. So the first thing we need to understand that this is an introduction to dispensation, giving simple answers first and then building as we go. We're going to go in more detail, okay? Yes, sir. So here's my question for you, Janet. What is the dispensation? A dispensation is a covenant. No, it's or not a covenant. A division. I'm sorry. Division. Uh, the the uh, <laughs> dispensation is a is a right dividing covenant of God. 
Well, uh, you are right that a dispensationalist, uh, they call it correctly handling the word of God. Some people call it rightly dividing. But um, yeah, correctly handling the scripture by recognizing the biblical covenant. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't tell me what a dispensation is. Do you remember Stacy asked this question? And yes. I told her what a dispensation was. Do you remember that? I'm sorry, sir. That's fine. Because this is, this is how I learned, through repetition. Some people may be able to learn faster. Uh, and they're like, man, you've already talked about that in the previous video. And that's fine. They can fast forward or go to the next thing or whatever. But my concern is you. I want you to have this internalized, all right? Okay. And uh, um, so this is what I said to Stacy and you. R read those words. Picture God ruling the earth like a household. Oh yeah, I remember now. <laughs> right. Picture of picture of God. Picture of God. Picture of yeah, God. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, the imagery is is of God ruling the household. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk more about it in a minute. Okay. okay read this passage. Ephesians one ten. That is the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So this shows us that dispensation is a biblical word. It's in the Bible. This is the King James Version. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Other translations will have different words there, but um, it's there. Now, what is this, Janet? Uh, this concert in Hong Kong, Wo Chow. <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> well, I, you know, when I was at Hong Kong, I saw that we went, you, we went into a dispensary, and I was like, oh, cool, and, you know. And I was like, this means that this would be a good point of reference for y'all to kind of start to understand the dispensation. You are promoting, you are promoting Hong Kong. <laughs> well, at least they won't cancel my video then, right? So. Basically, what happens at these places? They give out medicine, right? Mm -hmm. They give out anything. Well, yeah, but they give out, but uh, they give out what what is prescribed in certain doses and stuff, right? In a certain way. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. They're dispensing it, okay? Dispensing it. Yes. All right. Now this is from the Oxford English Dictionary. I was like, you know, I'm just going to go from the English basic and work my way into the original languages right and it's funny because while i was doing this i was like i started realizing rari did the same thing in dispensationalism and not only that he's using the same source except this is the condensed it's the concise one and he i guess he was using the full version or whatever so go ahead read what it says about a dispensation or dispensary 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 you don't need to, noun. that's just the pronouncing part. Noun, plural dispensaries. A room where medicines are prepared. Wait, uh, wait, uh, my face is blocking. Uh, I, a room where medicines are prepared and provided. A clinic provided by public or charitable funds. So in both of those ideas, we're talking about something being distributed, okay? Okay medicine Catherine. or whatever now, you don't need to know that part that's just the footnote okay now look at the now what's cool i was like oh yeah that, that's great but then i started looking right underneath that word is this word so this is the concise oxford dictionary and this is what it says tell me what you think read it first dispensation is now the action of dispensing Exemption from a rule or usual requirement. A religious or political system prevailing at a particular time, the mosaic dispensation. Archaic, an act of divine providence. Der derivative, derivatives? Yeah, derivatives. Derivatives, dispensational adjective. Is the adjective, right. So, okay, number one, the act of dispensing, right? That relates to the dispensary idea, something being uh, distributed. 
the number two is the one the Catholics use. They say that you've been granted a, a special dispensation. In other words, an exemption, uh, the way they use it, okay? But number three is closer to how the Bible uses it. Uh, and, and notice in it, it's a religious and political system. That's how they describe it, that occurs at a particular time, okay? So that tells you it involves religion, government, uh, how they do things at a particular time. Now, a dispensation and an age, which is a time word, are not the same thing. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I just want us to see from the English dictionary uh, how it's being used, okay? Look at this. This is the same dictionary underneath that entry. Go ahead, read it. Dispensationalism. Noun. Why it seems like noun, noun? Because what? in a dictionary, it'll tell you if it's a noun, a verb, an adjective. Oh, the dispensationalism the is a noun speech. word. Yes. It, it, a the, it's the part of speech, the noun. The noun. The dispensationalism, right? Yes. Not the Christian theology. Right. <laughs> Okay. Christian theology believe in a system of historical progression as, a, as revealed in the Bible, consisting of a series of stages in God's self-revelation and plan of salvation. The Revitis Dispensationalist is a noun. Okay, so let's talk about this real slowly. Belief in a system of historical progression. So they're saying that, that a dispensationalism has to do with human history, right? Yes. They're saying that it has to do with progression. Like, first, th this is how it was, and then everything yeah. went that way. Yeah. That it's revealed in the Bible, and that there's different stages, according to this, in God's mm -hmm. self-revelation. Remember we talked about that last time, about how God's revealing himself? And they also connected to the plan of salvation. Uh, I don't have a problem with that definition as long as they don't say di the dispensations are just about salvation. Um, but we'll talk more about that later. Okay? Mm. Now, read this. Region Middle English. So the, so the word dispensation is Middle English, right? Okay. The word dispensation is Middle English. Yes. Is that what you say? Okay. Yeah. Via Old French from Latin dispensare. Continue to wait out or disperse from the spender based on pender or wait. Wait. Yeah. We neither one of us know Latin. Maybe when I work on my doctor's degree, we'll learn Latin, you know. I've learned some with Sherry, but nothing, nothing wherever I could uh, um, keep up with her right now. So, what I want you to see is that this word means to weigh out or disperse. When you go to the dispensary, right, in Hong Kong, they weigh out your medicine, how much the dosage is. They weigh out how much you buy or whatever, and they disperse it to you, okay? Mm when you use a dispenser a soap dispenser that's on a wall it weighs out a certain amount when you hit the button some of it comes out right it dispenses it same thing with a towel dispenser the, the simple simple way that these words are used right mm. okay now look at this this is la this is from the latin uh interlinear vulgate okay so i'm just showing you that same passage in ephesians that you read this is what it says in the latin there's your word right there underlined, okay? Now, we're going to the Greek. Okay? Oikonomia. So read, read, yes, oikonomia. Oikonomia as a, as a, as a responsibility of management, management of a household, direction, office, state of being arranged, arrangement, order, or plan. Program of instruction, training. So when you say the word oikonomia, what's it sound like? What English word does it sound like? It is what? When you say oikonomia, what English word does it sound like? Sounds like, okay. What 
Oikonomia. Say it real fast. Oikonomia. Economy. Oikonomia. Yes, yes. Economy. Yes. So an economy has to do with management, right? Arrangement, mm -hmm. administration, money, exchange, all of those ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the word oikos mm -hmm. means house and, and nomia is from nomas, which means law, house rule or house mm -hmm. law. Got you? Okay, so go ahead, read this now. In it's... That was from the Badag, I think, let me check. Yeah, that was from the Badag. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, continue reading. Um, it, uh, in its literal sense of steward, manager of an estate, as in Luke 12, 42, 1 Corinthians 42, is found in Pitib 2, what's Pitib? It, it, it's called a papyri. Do you know what a papyri is? Yes, papyri, I know it. So okay. it's- What's a papyri? Papyri, pap, pap, uh, a papyri is a, a paper. <laughs> yes, it's related to paper. A uh, 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 leaves of that they write on that before that they were using Very to good. write yes. to write the thing and right. papyrus but when leaves. It, right, but it's specifically this is talking about the papyri, and so the papyri are a list of receipts, bills, love letters, you know that type of stuff that we found during that time so that we now know, oh, the Greek in the Bible is not a Holy Spirit special language. No, it, God used the normal language of that time, okay? Mm. So, it's, it, so what this is telling us is at this time, I think this was uh, early first century, uh, the word was being used as a steward, a manager of an estate, AD 172, a little bit later than, uh, Okay. First century. Okay, now look at this. What is this from, Asamoko? <laughs> Practical guide for employment of foreign. <laughs> that came from my the <laughs> that I sent you about about the rules. The rules of what? The rules of the contract between the employ the employers and the and the helper the employee. So our employment contract. So. Is what you're telling me that you're you are sort of like in a dispensation because your employees make the rules, right? Or the government makes mm. the rules and they hire you, and then you have a responsibility to fulfill those, right? Mm. And and as the DH, you have the responsibility of managing the house. Mm. So from now on, whenever I ask you what a dispensation is, you, you should say, oh, that's me managing the house. <laughs> okay? I mean, I could have okay. showed you, I could have showed you a picture of the Brady Bunch, Alice. I could have showed you uh, the Sound of Music. I could have showed you Mary Poppins or something like that. But I, but I figured that this would be, that you Filipinas would relate to this because this is what y'all do. Y'all have this responsibility to do this. So that's the easiest concept that I went with. So from your culture, oh. both the dispensary and from this, that's why I bring that all together, okay? Okay, got you. Now, let's listen to Mr. Ryrie. What does he say? Thus, the central idea in the word dispensation is that of managing or administering the affairs of a household. You see? Yeah, God is rule, ruling his own household. Yes, and through him in history, yes. To him in his history. His whole earth, yeah. All right, so, more. Look at this. So what we've seen, so hold on. We, we looked at the English, right? Mm -hmm. Then we looked at the original language. Then we saw that, okay, it's a biblical word. And now we're going to a biblical passage to see how it's used in context. Okay. Right? Go ahead. Luke 16, verse 1 to 2. Now, he was also saying to the disciples, there was a rich man 
who had a manager and this manager was reported to him as squandering his position. Squandering. Squ squandering. I thought I am slang, sorry. It's okay. Squandering his positions. And he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management for you can no longer be manager. So what we see from this is that you have a manager, okay? The word right there is oikonomas, okay? Oikonomas. An oikonomas is the manager of an oikonomia. Oikonomia. Is the manager of the economy, if you will, the household. And But see, you have an ultimate master, right, that puts this manager in charge. And because he's not a faithful steward, that's one of the words that is used, uh, he can no longer be that manager, no longer be a steward. Okay, mm. so the contract's going to be broke, right? Yeah, breaking the contract. Yeah. All right. Not for salvation, but service. Okay. Now look yeah. at this passage. For service, not for salvation. Make it clear. Breaking the contract is not losing for salvation, but... Well, yeah. Well, as I explained later in Covenants, they're, they're about service, fellowship, and worship. Um, okay. but we'll talk about that more later. Okay. First, First Corinthians 4, verse 1 to 4, let a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. But to me, it is very small thing that I may be examined by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even examine myself. For I am conscious of nothing against myself, yet I am not by this acquainted, but the one who examiners me is the Lord. Right. So Paul saying, I have been entrusted by the Lord to do this job, and I know that I have to be found faithful. And you may not yes. think I'm faithful, uh, but the and I'm not going to go into my failures, you know. Mm. Uh, because I know that I can't see things the way God can see things because he's yeah. the one I'm giving my account to. He's the perfect one that sees yes. everything correctly. Yeah. Um, there's another thing that it talks about the mysteries of God. We're going to talk about that word mystery in a little bit because it's important as we're studying the dispensations, but we'll come back mm. to that. Okay. Okay. Read this one. Galatians 4, 1, 2. What's it earlier? What was that? That was 1 Corinthians 4. Oh, Galatians 4, 1 to 2. Now I say, as long as the heir, of, the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. Remember, this is that uh, uh, allegory, wherever he's explaining what we've been studying for a long time in Galatians 3. And he's explaining about uh, Israel was like a child underneath the Mosaic law and mm. uh, to a certain point in time. And so this shows you that the father uh, in this analogy has control of how long a guardian is in power or a manager is in power. Or in other words, as someone is the steward over a particular dispensation. Mm. Okay? Okay. All right, read this. Ephesians 3, 1 to 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery as I wrote before in brief. Okay, the word for stewardship, this is the NASB, and that's the word for dispensation. Uh, stewardship. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but the word mystery, mystery means, uh, mysterion means uh, something it basically re relates to information that has not been uh, revealed, okay? 
And in context, we will see even in Ephesians 3, not only had it not been revealed, it didn't exist yet. Okay? So a mystery is not, oh, I don't know what it is. Rather, it's information that's known by the people that are within the inner circle. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, read this one. Colossians 1, verse 25 to 26. Of this church, I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery, which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but, now, but has now been manifested in his saints. Uh, it's saints. revealed already. Yeah. So but saints. it's saying it didn't exist before. And so this mm -hmm. relate Ephesians 3 and Colossians 1 relate to our arguments for why we say the church did not exist in the Old Testament. And nor was it revealed in the Old Testament. But we'll talk about that way in the future. Um, okay. Ephesians 3, 9. And to bring to light what is the administration, again, this is a dispensation term, right? of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. See, it was hidden in God. Has okay. been hidden in God who created all things. All right. So yep. the, in Ephesians 1, when it used the dispensation word the first time, we're talking about the fullness of times. That refers to the millennium, okay? The, then in Ephesians 3, when they talk about the dispensation, that refers to the church age. And then in, in Galatians 4, when it talked about uh, the manager being over the household and to the father, uh, talking about Israel, that implies that there was another dispensation before that. So look mm -hmm. what look what Rari says here. The Bible does name two dispensations in the same way that dispensationalists do and implies a third. So he's saying that the dispensationalism is a biblical word and the way the dispensationalist is using this word is the same way the Bible is using this word. Okay? Mm. Yeah, we'll okay. talk more about this later on. Okay. okay, so this is what he's saying a dispensation is or, or can be defined as so read what it says may be may be defined as a stewardship administration oversight or management of other others property as we have seen as we have seen this involves responsibility accountability and faithfulness on the part of the steward now i want to make this clear just because we're quoting Rari doesn't mean that we have to have the same beliefs as Rari. Yeah. And, and because, I mean, Rari contributed a lot to dispensationalism. It's helped, you know, through his writings, it's helped me and others understand the Bible. And it's a good place to start. But when he wrote the book, Dispensationalism, he's, he's fighting in the book, you know? He's going back and forth with the different views. And so because of that, it's a difficult book for a new Christian who's being introduced to the dispensations to read. And so what I hope to do is I hope to get the simplified stuff out of it as we're going through the process, you know, and, and start there as our foundation. And as we get into more advanced stuff, then we will, we will be evaluating, and we'll be doing it in the process, we'll be evaluating, is this biblical? Because I don't want to have a belief and I don't want to explain the belief that it's not biblical, you know? Yes. Okay, because that's the goal. That's why our channel is dedicated to inductive Bible study. I'm proud of you, Salako. For what? For saying that, that you don't want to believe what, if, if it's not biblical. So oh. you, are, you are really trying to dive as oh. deep as you can. Okay. All right. So go ahead, read this. A dispensation is primarily a stewardship arrangement and not a period of time. 
Ah, uh, it's good. I was contradicting in this. Why? Because I said earlier, it's a period of time. It's not a period of time. That's an age. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Through, but obviously. it's what goes on during a period of time. So think of it like this. Your contract, right, is two years. Mm. Mm. Okay? So that's it's the age. That's the age, yes, the period of time. Mm. But what yeah. you do during that period of time to manage the house, that is your dispensation of Janet. Okay? Yeah, the dispensation end from the first day of, of two years until the two years will end. Right, it's not about time. Or another example is a pres the president of America or, D or Duterte even. You know, you have the period of time that they're in office, but then you use the term the, the, the Bush administration, the Clinton administration, the Obama administration, the Trump administration, mm -hmm. because each one of those is managing- It's a dispensation. Yes, it's like that. Um, mm, the difference okay. is, though, is God ultimately is in charge, and so God doesn't change. His character is the same. So mm. it's more like the idea of, like, as a parent, how you run the house in one way when they're babies. But as they grow to be two years old and they're starting to, or one or two, and they're starting to crawl around and getting stuff, you have to lock up cabinets, you have to put things, you know, so that they don't drink poison or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. as they grow, you, you uh, run the house differently. Now, the weakness of that illustration is it has, it has the parent changing according to the growth of the child. But really, what happens with the dispensations is God is the one that initiates it. He sets the rules, the guidelines. And then man has the responsibility to follow, okay, mm. to obey. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But I just want you to have this simple picture in your mind that if somebody comes to you and says, what's a dispensation, you know? So this is Ryrie's definition. Go ahead. Okay. Ryrie's definition of dispensation is a distinguishable economy in the outworking of God's purpose. Yes. Okay. He says it's distinguishable. In other words, you can tell the difference, right, between yeah. one dispensation and another. He calls it an, an economy, right? We already know where that comes from. And he calls it mm -hmm. the outworking or the working out of God's purpose, right, mm -hmm. which we said was mm -hmm. related to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. All right. So, do you remember this? This is where we were last time. What is the big idea of God's plan? Which is, you remember the answer? I'm going to go through this um, fast. Uh, uh, to, glorify, uh, to, glory, to glorify himself? Yes, good. The glory of God as he reveals himself. <laughs> yes. All right, good. Now, you remember this? Yes. Okay. Somebody was asking on the timeline, what, what is the difference between dispensationalism and covenant theology? Well, let's just begin here. Dispensationalists believe in the biblical covenants, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk more about those later on, but the covenant theologian believes primarily in the theological covenants. They may believe in, in the uh, biblical covenants as well, but they believe that the theology covenants, in other words, this idea that God the Father made a covenant with the Son, about and determine who would be saved in, in a covenant of redemption and all of that type of stuff like that, that that is the main focus. So what happens is it makes salvation the main focus, right? Even though they talk about the glory of God, they, they tend to make salvation the main focus. So when they're reading the Bible, they tend to see salvation everywhere. And they tend to see Jesus everywhere. They Sometimes they think that... Uh, the people knew the same thing that we knew, you know, that type of thing. And that's just an overgeneralization, but hopefully you'll point someone in the right direction. Okay? okay. So this is showing the seven dispensations. Remember we talked about before that there could be more than seven or less than seven. The number mm. of dispensations is not what makes you a dispensationalist. And in the first video, we talked about what makes us a dispensationalist. In this video, we're not going to go into detail about that right now. 
So innocence, conscience, government, promise, law, grace, and the kingdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. What, remember we talked about this? What ideas existed before salvation was introduced? Uh, what ideas existed before salvation was introduced? What ideas existed before salvation was introduced? Yeah. Remember what, we talked wait, about the Trinity? At the communication, fellowship? Fellowship, yes. We, we basically, the idea is, and with the angels too, fellowship, worship, and service. Now, mm -hmm. um, Andy Woods makes the argument that when God created the heavens and the earth, the angels were created at that same time. But regardless, it's still before mankind was created. Even it might have been a day before mankind was created. Think about that. Remember in the last video, we were thinking about, well, how long did it take for Adam and Eve to fall, right? And we just mm. we played around with the idea of maybe it actually is a day, you know? Um, mm. And then, uh, but if you, but if the angels were created before then, it only took them a day to fall too, right? Yeah, I, did you remember that I said the 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 uh, it it counts one day? So one day is the twenty four hours that day and night, right? Yes. Adam made in in uh, daytime, and then Eve is made on my assumption. Okay, my assumption. Eve is made in the nighttime. Oh. Then the same thing, the same thing when maybe, okay, maybe God also, when he created heavens, because God created heaven and earth, it mentions heaven first, heavens, okay, heavens. So in that heavens, including the angels, is in the heavens, one of the heavens mm -hmm. uh, already existing during that time because oh, as what you said earlier that uh, already have a relation relationship with God and Jesus and the uh, Father Son and Holy Spirit and before 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 everything is existing so when when God made heavens so that during that time uh, God made the angels too first before human before human in this world. Okay. So regardless of his long time or short time, the point is, is that God and the angels existed before the human existed. Right? Huh? Regardless if it was a long time or a short time, God and the angels existed before humans before, existed. Yes, I so, agree. So the principle that fellowship, worship, and service existed before it's, salvation still it holds. Yes, amen. All right. There it is. Question, what is the first dispensation? Innocent. Good. We will say innocent. All right. How was God gracious in this dispensation? Remember that one? How was God gracious in this dispensation? Uh, he's... His manage his management throughout the generation, uh, throughout from the beginning till end. But we're talking about innocence, though. Oh, oh, okay. So, so uh, uh, what did he do during innocence? You answered this before. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he he let them. He, he's gracious is because he he uh, put everything in the garden. Okay. And then. Uh, uh, to uh, you know, to provision of the, the uh, Adam and Eve. Okay. So that's. His All right. So gracious. that's before the fall. What about after the fall? After the fall, uh, God is gracious to them because they uh, God gave them hope from the seed of a woman. Right. That the seed, that the seed would defeat the serpent. Okay. Yeah. And we talked yes. about all that in the video uh, before, and we'll go in more detail later on. Mm. Okay. So in many ways. <laughs> all right. So what are the elements of a dispensation? Do you remember that? Uh, here again about elements. My goodness. Wait. I, I will try if I can remember. <laughs> elements okay. is the event. Mm -hmm. 
and him, you know, he experience human experience. human responsibility uh, human responsibility and anyway uh, there's a five anyway i can't remember everything but you're doing good event events human response human test yeah feel your judgment divine days right okay what begins and ends the dispensation what begins and ends when god when uh, in, in in when God first called a man and end with that uh, man's responsibility. Okay, so the event you're saying when man places or when God places a human in a responsibility, he yeah, gives, he gives him revelation of what to do. Yes, in a different in 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 a different person. And when does it that end? God uses. Huh. When does the dispensation end? When when they fall before the fall. No, when, when God fall. brings judgment. Oh yeah, that's the thing. That's because what I would think say. of it like this: when God brings judgment, <laughs> when God brings judgment, He's and given more revelation. Okay. 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 And we'll talk more about that, especially when we get into the covenants. So new responsibility begins uh -huh. and judgment ends as a rule of life. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's important to understand as a rule of life. Because mm -hmm. as you go through the dispensations, there's what we call rules of life, the govern life, if you will. And we'll mm -hmm. talk more about that in the future. So what is a covenant? Remember that? Covenant, yeah, covenant is a law. A salako. You're repeating right. your you're repeating the things that you said last time. <laughs> learn from your mistakes or, or or learn from the better suggestions if you don't want to call them mistakes. Okay. What is a covenant? A contract. Yes, good. It's a contract. And we'll talk about the different kinds later on. We always said uh, a law. Covenant is a law. I don't know. All right. So, do you have any questions or thoughts that you want to talk, ask about? Uh, I got to stop sharing my screen here. Answer. Where'd it go? Okay. Do you have any questions or thoughts about what we've done today or what we would like to do? I don't know how much time we've spent, but we have, I think we have a little bit of time. Hmm yeah um i'm going to continue adding more and going deeper but i just want to do review go deeper review go deeper review go deeper um because that not only does that help us internalize it but it also gives me time to to prepare it you know as i need to yeah 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 if you want to know my thought just one. Uh, it's. I think it's beyond our the the, the, the dispensation. <laughs> Maybe my, my my thought this time is no wonder why you said me earlier. I have PowerPoint. Don't say anything. Let me drive. <laughs> so now I know why you said that earlier. So I really don't. I really didn't understand at the first at the first PowerPoint that you had. You know because yeah, why we. I was and I was I was trying to question you why why we are talking about this you know and then you are quoting like in the 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 Greek like that it's not about dispensation but now I can, uh, I can. well you got to remember in inductive Bible study or an inductive presentation you're building a case so what happens is you get the information and then it all comes together at the end. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, thank you for being patient and trusting me. You know. <laughs> sure. So. Yeah. So I think I, I have nothing to say. Okay. Just say thank you. Yep. All right. Well, address our audience out there, um, and then close us out in prayer. Please. I didn't practice that enough. So, but anyway. Thank you so much for for watching ladies and gentlemen and hopefully this video uh it's uh it's blesses you and if you think that it blesses you 
and you want other uh, friends, your friends and relatives to, to be blessed also, please share this video to them. And yeah, continue to follow us on, on, on anywhere in fa on Facebook. If you are in uh, YouTube, uh, you can uh, describe, uh, subscribe, I should say. You can subscribe and click the video to support this ministry. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, if you're subscribed already, hit the bell if you want notifications. Um, and we thank God that um, I think uh, we just made 30,000 views. So yeah, thank, thank God for, so that. for that. All right. Well, we'll close this video and we'll be working on the next one. See y'all then. Bye.